Welcome to the Tool Hut channel. Today we have a video intended for somebody that wants to get into doing programming. Not so much an instructional video, but just some advice on getting into programming. Stand by. While you got a second, why don't you go ahead and click that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell if you want to be notified when stuff comes out. I welcome any questions or comments you may have down below. Okay, first things first. Any of the equipment that you see used in my videos is available on the website. If it's not there, send me an inquiry off the website toolhutusa.com. That's T O O L H U T USA. Dot com. My name is Sam. Okay, so let's just go over a couple of things here. First of all, my name is Sam Brooks. I have been helping shops get into programming since 2005. I don't consider myself an expert. I'm also not just a company or an engineer here to tell people how to do things based on what we've learned on the bench. I have seen lots of shops make mistakes. I've probably actually helped them make some of these mistakes. And obviously, you learn from your mistakes. So, I'm going to try to give you the recommendations that I have based on the mistakes that I've seen shops make and try to help you not make them. Okay, I'm probably going to beat this one to death. But make sure, if you're unfamiliar with programming, that you buy your J2534 device from a company that can support it. Buy the whole package. Get the J2534 device, the laptop, and the stable power supply from the same company. That way, when you call with a problem, they know what you're using. The best piece of advice I can give you when you're starting out is decide what brand you want to start with. Notice I did not say brands, and if you're saying that you're going to do everything that J2534 can do, the suggestion I have for you is to stop. Pick one brand, and let's move forward together. Okay, so what brand should you pick? My suggestion is you pick a brand that you see a lot of. Now, obviously that's probably what you're looking to do. But I've seen so many shops that pick a brand that they only see once or twice a month. So what I want you to do is I want you to pick a brand that you see a lot of in your shop. And I want you to make a commitment. Now, you haven't bought any equipment yet, maybe. So I want you to make a commitment to using the tool for the first 30 days on this particular brand. So I want you to follow some steps that I'm going to lay out further for you here. And then I also want you to pick a brand that's easy to sign up. We'll go over more of this later as well. And make sure you have a backup plan. Make sure you have a shop locally that programs this brand. Make sure you can you have a relationship with the dealer. Because it's not if something goes wrong, it's going to be when something goes wrong. So have a plan for when something goes wrong. Okay, so let's go through the examples of brands that I would recommend that you start with. I know I told you to pick one brand, but what I want you to do is off my list of vehicles, I want you to pick from these brands if possible. It may not be possible. GM or Ford, I actually prefer Ford in the beginning. And then if you're do a lot of Asian stuff, uh, pick Toyota. You probably see a lot of Toyotas if you're an Asian shop, so that's a good place to start. Nissan's not terrible. Hondas are not terrible, except for getting their software to load. So there's some reasons that I have picked these brands. So I strongly suggest GM, Ford, or Toyota in the beginning. Okay, so you've decided what brand you're going to program. Now, 
the best thing to do at this point is to buy your J2534 device from a company that can support it. So when you have a problem, you can call them. So I know I've already covered this, but I told you I was going to beat it to death. So buy it from somebody that you can call that can answer some questions. Okay, I've kind of given you some advice on who to buy it from. So now I'm going to tell you where not to buy it from. I strongly suggest you avoid buying it from the tool truck. Now, there are some tool truck guys out there that are very familiar with programming. Many of them can set up the tool, but when you have a problem, they have no idea what to do. So I strongly suggest avoiding the tool trucks. There are some good tool truck drivers, don't get me wrong. They're just few and far between. The other one is to avoid getting a J2534 that comes with a scanner. I know, you guys are going to kill me for this one. But most of the time, the units are not supported by the manufacturers or the supports or the updates are inconsistent and they cause all kinds of grief that you don't really need in the beginning. So I use a one that come with a scanner as a backup. And I've also got another one that came off from a tool truck that I took in trade from a customer that I also use as another backup. So I'm very familiar with programming though. So I know what to expect and what not to expect. If you're new to this, you need to avoid these potholes. Okay. So you've bought a J2534 device, you're going to start programming. The next thing you need to consider is a laptop. Now, hopefully you considered this before you bought your J2534 device, but in case you didn't. So the first thing I can tell you is do not try to use the same laptop that you got your service information on, that you write work orders on, blah, blah, blah. Don't do it. It's a tool. Buy a laptop for programming. Make sure that it meets the manufacturer's specifications that you intend to program. So when you call their tech support line, they don't say, well, it's because of your laptop. Make sure you meet their specifications. Make sure that the software that they want loaded is loaded on your laptop properly. That's the Java, the Air, all of the little stuff that they need. Make sure you got the right browser, the right operating system, the right hard drive, the right processor, all of it. Just make sure that you, your laptop meets their specifications. Okay, a little bit more about laptops here. So, there's a couple of different ways to do laptops. Many manufacturers don't play well on the same laptop. I strongly suggest either one of two ways of doing it. I like separate laptops. Put the manufacturers that don't play well together on separate laptops. Some people do multiple partition single laptops, but as your programming business grows, you're going to have more technicians that are needing laptop at the same time, or if something happens to one of your laptops, you're completely out of business. I strongly suggest separate laptops. The next one is the stable power supply. Buy a good quality stable power supply. I strongly suggest a hundred amp of variable voltage. That'll cover everything you'll ever need want to program as far as cars. If you get a hundred amp, you can grow your programming business the, and you don't have to worry about your stable power supply. The day of programming cars with a jump box or a battery charger, they're behind us. Their files are bigger, they're taking longer. The stable power supply is the only way to do it properly. We don't want grief, we don't want problems. Spend the money and get a good power supply. Okay, so you've done it. You've got a J2534 device. You got the right laptop. You got the power supply. Next thing you need to do is commit to using it. Because the programming varies from manufacturer to manufacturer and car model to car model, I want you to commit to plug it into at least one car per day and checking it for an update. Also commit to doing two updates a week. Now I will tell you if you're checking for updates, you're gonna get two customers 
per week that will buy the update. If not, pull in your car, pull in your boss's car, pull in one of your workmates' cars and check it for an update. Just learn to use the equipment. Make a commitment to programming two cars a week, even if you got to do it for free. The other one is to watch some videos on the next manufacturer that you want to program. So whatever manufacturer you're programming now, the next one that you want to do, don't be plugging into it yet, but start watching some videos on programming those cars. There's lots of videos out there on programming different manufacturers, etc., etc. Start learning what's different about it from what you're already programming. Okay, I know that wasn't one of my typical videos, but thanks for watching. Let me know if this is the if you would want to see some more videos of this layout architecture training type videos instead of actually programming a car. I'm thinking it would be beneficial to a lot of people to understand how to do some things. I would like to do a series of these setting up for each manufacturer and programming each manufacturer, etc., etc. But anyway, thumbs up, thumbs down. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see some more videos. Questions, comments, criticisms down below. Keep them clean or I delete them. Have a great day.